with temperatures that exceed 100 degrees. It can create dangerous conditions, not only for us, but especially for our families affected by dementia. Those living with dementia related diseases may not know they are developing a heat stroke. We want to educate you on how to keep your loved ones safe as we deal with the extreme heat wave. Laura Gaucher, program director for the bridge, joins us now on how to take these few extra steps and those to look how to look after those. Laura, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So tell us what the difference is between somebody just like me and you versus somebody who has dementia when we get into the heat. And what are some of those signs that we need to be looking out for? So you and me, we can tell the difference when someone is or when we ourselves are getting hot, getting cold, we're sweating, we need to drink water. Someone with dementia does not have those signals because that part of the brain is actually shrinking. Wow. So they can't set, can't tell whether if they are getting thirsty or getting too hot. And nine times out of 10, you'll see someone who has dementia in a heat wave like we have with a winter coat on. So what are the signs that we can look out for if say we do have a neighbor who has dementia? Um, what are some of those things that we can be looking out for to keep them safe as well? Making sure if you're, you know, if you know someone who has dementia that they are staying indoors in the hottest part of the day, you know, especially that 10 to 2 when the, the sun is the highest and that heat wave that we're having right now, they, making sure they have proper fluids and whatnot because as we age, our thirst for drink and fluids actually decreases. So making sure that they are drinking enough water and being on the lookout if they are just wandering around outside because they're either looking for something or they're bored or being outside is something that they enjoy and they don't realize it is you know, it is so hot outside right now. And that one's kind of a hard one, Laura, because if we just see people walking around, sometimes we just don't know, um, you know, so looking mm -hmm. out to see if maybe they look confused at that time. Yeah, so going up and talking to them, so, and, and asking them, you know, how, how are they doing? If they recognize you, that's great. And you can get them to talk and see, you know, if they're a little more disoriented than normal because the heat can disorient someone really fast with dementia and talking to them and just seeing if they are okay, if they have water or if they're confused or if they're wandering, if they're looking for something in particular and getting them back to their house or if it's someone that you don't know or if you're not familiar with, making sure to call 911 and getting someone to come out so they can identify that person and getting them back to their families. And Laura, this is more common than we think because we are actually a state that is growing in this specific area. Yes. Um, actually, 92,000 people in Louisiana have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's ages 65 and over. So it's something that we are all going to have to deal with before long. And so taking the proper precautions, especially in this weather, to look out for our neighbors or look out for our family members so that we can make sure that they stay safe. What is the best way if we do notice somebody, is it just slowly to approach them and, and ask them how they're doing? Or, cause I know sometimes that can be a little bit uncomfortable of like if I just didn't know, like what do I do? Or are you okay? But I guess one of those tell tall signs would be um, seeing somebody with a jacket on, a heavy jacket. And that happens more than you think it, um, you know, they'll be walking down the street with a big winter coat on because their body can't tell them what temperature it is. So they are going someplace. They have a purpose of going, but they may not be able to tell you where they're going. So just engaging them in conversation, talk to them forward. Don't try and, you know, touch them or whatnot. Just give them proper space, but enough or you're close enough to where that you can speak to them and get a little more information and, you know, contacting the proper authorities to get someone to come out and get them back to their families. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for being here today and educating us on what some of those signs are to look out for with our neighbors or loved ones, family members, um, or even just people in general that you're around, you know, looking aware, being aware of some of those signs and symptoms will really help us out in life. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely.